in the previous lecture we saw how uh, uh, how a particle getting scattered by a moving scatterer that is a moving magnetic meter so in this process how the energy is being transferred whether the energy is being transferred to the particle or to the scatterer we saw the uh, cases so during the head down collision the energy is uh, the energy is transferred from the scatterer to the particle and in the case of follow on collision the, uh, the energy is transferred from the particle to the scatterer we also said in a randomly moving scatterers and the particle the probability for the head down collision is more than the follow on collision therefore there will be net gain in the particle energy so towards the end of it we got an expression if you remember we have to always to go back what we got is the fractional increase in energy i use epsilon by epsilon that is given by 2v by c square into v minus px the vx is the x component of the velocity well so and if you remember this is a picture we had the black one is our uh, lab frame or the k frame and the red one is a, a scatterer frame and the blue is a particle the trajectory of the particle and this is what expression we got and uh, let us assume let us assume the scatterer is sitting at the origin so all the particle being scattered will be when it hits the origin so if we have this picture so then we 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 saw so if this is the velocity then your vx is nothing but because it is a negative x x axis so vx is equal to minus v cos theta so then we wrote this as so delta e epsilon by epsilon is going to be 2v by c square into v minus minus 1 plus v cos theta perfect so when your theta is between 0 to pi by 2 so we are going to have a head on collision or i'll say rather less than pi by 2 it's going to have a head on collision or if it is greater than pi by 2 it's going to have a follow on collision so in the uh, in the 0 to pi by 2 case this is going to be an uh, there going to be an uh, increase in the energy of the particle in other case there will be decrease in the energy of the particle so now uh, we want to find out so if there are randomly stochastically moving this uh, scatterers in the particular there we want to see what will be the mean average gain of the uh, after average gain in the energy of the particle so to do that so we have to find out so we know the probability the energy gain is whether it gains energy or going to lose energy totally depends upon the theta okay so if it is less than pi by 2 it's going to gain energy if it is greater than pi by 2 it is going to lose energy so the probability we have to get the probability of the particle colliding at a certain angle theta so for to make our uh, Uh, calculation simple we will assume all the scatterers are moving at the same velocity v so and if i want to find out what is the mean gain in the energy so then what this will be i am going to find out is del epsilon by epsilon oh sorry equal to mean of 2v by c square v plus p cos theta so we are going to assume all the scatterers are moving at the same velocity and let we are take the particle of consideration it is going to have velocity v so then the whole mean will come out to be the mean of the angle alone so this is going to be 2v by c square into v plus v mean cos theta so if i am able to get the mean cos theta when i substitute back here i am going to get what will be my mean gain in the energy okay. so let me write down this equation so this equation is what we want so we are going to let me note it down here so we are going to have del fractional del epsilon by epsilon the mean is equal to 2 v by c square into v plus v mean 
cos theta. Let us have this equation. So we have to find out what is the probability, what is the probability uh, of a particle hitting at an angle theta with a scatterer. So let us try to do some uh, small, uh, a simple some picture we will see. So to find the angle dependence of the probability, let us consider a situation which I have modified in our figure. So here, all the quantities which is written in black are the measurements done in the K-frame. And uh, well, the other things I, I have, in fact, I measured everything in the K-frame. So let us consider a situation. Let the particle uh, hit at an angle theta with the scatterer, which is sitting on the origin of my K-frame frame at time T1. And after a certain instant, let us say some duration, when the K-prime frame is shifted to uh, another location, which is moving along the x-axis, so let another particle, which was, which is let it hit at the same angle theta at a time T2. So now, so the time difference measured in the K-frame, that will be, what will be the time difference? So that will be delta T, will be the difference in time between these two, uh, 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 these two uh, ejections. So that will be your T2 minus T1 plus this delay. So that is nothing but this distance. This is x1, x2. So this will be x2 minus cos theta. So the time will be divided by the velocity of the particle. That will be the time taken for the duration to this much time I have to add up. So uh, that will be your x2 minus x1 cos theta by b. Well, so this is the time delay measured by the k frame when the two particles hit the scatterer. So let us, we know uh, from the, how these quantities are being transferred from the k frame frame and the k frame, the Lorentz transformation. So what are the Lorentz transformation for uh, x? The space x is equal to uh, uh, x is equal to x prime, sorry, x is equal to gamma times x prime plus v t prime. So where gamma is equal to 1 by square root of 1 minus v square by c square. v is the velocity of the scatterer. And our t, the Lorentz transformation, t is equal to t prime plus v by c square of x prime. So let us transform these two quantities. I get the x1 and x2. Let us try to transform these quantities in the k prime frame. So your x1, x1 will be gamma times x1 prime plus v t1 prime. And your x2 will be gamma times x2 prime plus v t2 prime. And if you see here, my x1 prime and x2 prime are zero because it's hitting at the origin. So therefore, this guy goes off and this also goes off. So what you are going to x1 equal to gamma v t1 prime. And your x2 will be Again, gamma v t2 prime. So then let us take that time also. Transfer the time between the frames. So therefore, t1, again t1 equal to, so gamma t1 prime, we basically x1 prime. Again, I said x1 prime is origin, so it will be 0. So it will be just gamma t1 prime. And t2 will be equal to, similarly, gamma t2 prime. So now let us substitute this in this equation. So your delta t will be uh, t2 minus t1, that is here. So that is gamma into t2 prime minus t1 prime plus x2 minus x1, that is here. So there we have a gamma v factor, which comes in your t2 prime minus t1 prime, and we have a cos theta. And then we have on the velocity of the particle v. Yeah. 
so we will write, write down this t2 multiplied by delta t prime so this will be delta t will be equal to gamma delta t prime plus gamma v delta t prime cos theta by v or if i write this one so delta t will be equal to delta t prime gamma 1 plus Ga, uh, 1 plus v by v cos theta. That's right. Yeah, fine. So, and this is an interesting relation. This is what we wanted. So, this will be your delta 4 we are having. So, if I try to express delta t prime, so delta t prime will be equal to delta t divided by gamma to 1 plus v sorry v by v cos theta so now this equation this expression says the collision time of the two cases we consider is measured what the collision time measured measured in the k point frame is going to be uh, a factor gamma 1 plus v by v cos theta times smaller than the collision time what is measured in our k frame. So, and therefore, so the collision time will be by this factor. So, the rate will be this much factor more than the rate what you are going to see it in our k frame. So, therefore, uh, the probability of collision, the probability of collision is going to be uh, proportional to the rate of collision. So then your probability will be proportional to this factor that is gamma times 1 plus v, v by cos theta. So but anyway, we want to get an average of theta only. So you know, even when you take an average, this gamma, gamma gets cancelled so, so we don't need this gamma. So this gives you the, so this is factor which gives you the angle dependence of the probability the particle is going to hit the scatterer so this is the one which is going to give the probability of the particle hitting the scatterer so let us for consider let us make it uh, more simplistic case let us say this particle is already relativistic so when it's relativistic i can always i'm writing v is approximately equal to c in that case i can always write this as v by c and now since i said v by c this equation also changes i'm right because this is velocity i'm going to write it as c so then this is going to be 2v by c square v plus c cos theta. Okay, so now we ought to find out that. So we know the probability is going to go as a proportional to 1 plus v by c cos theta. So then I can always take, I want to find out the average of cos theta. So I know I got to uh, integrate over the entire solid angle. So, anyway, there is no phi dependence. So, you have to integrate only with the theta angle. So, your average of cos theta will be, will be the integration. Theta goes on 0 to pi, 0 to pi cos theta. And this is the probability. 1 plus V by C cos theta. And then the angle element sin theta d theta okay the d5 anyway and this divided by the total probability that is 1 plus v by c cos theta sine theta d theta so this is a d5 term get cancels the bond below as i said earlier this gamma terms all the factors will get cancelled here so this will work out because basically we want to find out the average in the angle so this is all we have to do it. So again, this is 0 to pi. Well, this integration can be done very trivially. I'm not going, going to skip this integration. I can say what you will get is, you can do it in a pen and a paper. This is simple. What you're going to get is 1 by 3 V by C. Cool. So this integration is going to be <coughs> 1 by 3 V by C. So now let me substitute back there. So therefore, your average fractional energy gain 
will be 2v by c square into v plus so this c gets uh, uh, c gets cancelled off so c square so this is going to become 1 by 3 and the cos theta will be uh, what is that I am missing yes v correct yes so so this is going to be if you can do it out calculation so this is going to be 4 by 3 into 2 equal to the for this is going to be 8 times v by c whole square is that right yes oh, sorry 8 by 3 so 8 by 3 so my so our fractional mean fractional gain in the particle energy when the scatterers and the particle are moving randomly is something 8 by 3 v by c square and this expression let me take it down so this gives you the mean gain in the energy and let me put it in a box so now if you carefully see this expression the mean fractional gain in the energy is going to go as a v by c whole square there is second order in the v by c where v is the velocity of the scatterer so therefore this fractional gain energy is going to go in the second order in the v by c therefore this acceleration process because it's a positive quantity we can see it very clearly this is a positive quantity so therefore there's going to be gain energy and the gain is going to be v by c whole square that is going to be second order in the uh, uh, second order in v by c therefore this acceleration is called as your second order fermi acceleration fermi acceleration and and we saw how when the second order comes because when the uh, scatterers and uh, particles are all moving randomly or maybe stochastic so this is also called as your stochastic acceleration process so second order fermi acceleration is always a stochastic acceleration mechanism well and in the next lecture what you will see is okay yeah, well this is all are fine so we are having in there's a fractional gain in energy using so next lecture what we will do is we will try to find out what will be the particle distribution suppose let us uh, start at a time t equal to zero now the scatterers are going to start scattering and the particles are moving so the eventually the particle are, all the particles are going to get a mean energy gain in this one so eventually after a certain time or maybe a steady state after a long time some system is going to come into a steady state at a steady state the electron is going to have a distribution so what will be the distribution the accelerated electron distribution so what will be the distribution and will that what's the peculiarity of the distribution and what are the uh, what are the factors which is going to uh, determine the shape of the distribution all those things we will see in the next lecture thank you